We are back in the world of Smile, but this time around we are following pop star Sensation Sky as she tries to wipe the smile off the entity's face and survive the madness of Smile 2. Is it good? Is it great? Is it better than the first? Well, we'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler-free review of Smile 2. First, let's get the conversation going in the comments below. Let me know if you've seen the first Smile, if you were a fan of the first one, and of course, were you excited to see the second one? And once you've seen Smile 2, let me know your favorite moments, least favorite moments, what worked, what didn't work. Did you like the ending? Do you want to see a Smile 3? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So last night when I saw the film, I posted my out of theater reaction, and I'll be honest, a lot of my feelings kind of remain the same, but I've come around to some of things after sleeping on it. But I will say, kicking off this review, one of the things that remains the same is I love the opening of the film. Like, I'm not even joking when I say it's probably one of my favorite openings of this year. Now, I won't divulge too much information about the opening because it is like it caught me by surprise. Like, I was leaning into the film. It's my favorite part of the movie, if I'm being honest. But I'll just say when it comes to the opening, it picks up the pieces from the original film and adds a sense of closure to that particular movie. What I loved about the opening was it felt so different from the film that we actually see in this particular movie. But also, I'm a big fan of the particular character we see in the opening and I think that idea of that character trying to do certain things that were established in the first film and seeing that character trying to do that thing kind of playing into the loophole of the entity was so awesome and I said it in my reaction last night I'm gonna say it again here that is your movie <laughs> like that the lead up to that event could have been the movie and I just love what we get in that opening like I was just like locked in and if the film would have kept that momentum for the first 15 minutes of the film it would have easily been one of the best horror films of the year for me. But let me be clear, even with my enthusiasm, how much I love the opening and I wish that it would have expanded upon within the rest of the film, I don't want to take away from what the actual movie is, but more importantly, I don't want to take away an incredible performance, a career-defining performance by the lead of this film, Naomi Scott. Now, we learn very early on that her character, Sky, experiences something traumatic in her past and she's trying to make a comeback with a new look and a new tour, but unfortunately, she's the target of of this evil entity. While her character is written in a way that can make some of her decision makings a little bit frustrating while watching this film, I still found Scott to be truly captivating and extremely compelling as we really get to see her emotional depths and complexity of her character and what she's facing. There is this level of physicality that she brought to the role that I was very impressed by and similarly to M. Night Shyamalan's concert movie Trap, Scott gets to showcase her real life talent as an actual singer and dancer and while I wasn't old overly excited for those particular moments, I still thought that she was great. Now, one of the more impressive things about her performance for me was, as the film goes along and we learn more about Sky, we learn more about her past and how she feels like she's a wrecking ball in everyone's life, we find out that she's a pretty <laughs> not so good person. I'll just leave it at that. But the thing about Naomi is, there's this vulnerability within her role. There's this type of like a, a, a feeling I have for the character where I'm like, I'm still rooting for her even though she's a bad person. <laughs> in a sense once you kind of learn more about her but again that's all due to the testament of a great performance by Naomi Scott. A writer director Peter Finn is back and with a bigger budget which in return comes more sets and an even larger scale for the story. Now I think that Peter is a really solid director and even though I feel like there's some shortcomings in his writing abilities I still like his ideas that he has to offer to this type of subject matter and I love how creative he is when crafting the thrills and I love his unique style behind the camera and framing these upside down smiles with these overhead shots. Another thing that I love about the production of this film is how awesome and creepy that ice cream truck like score permeates throughout this film. Now personally I'm a big fan of the first smile like I thought it was effective jump scares, I like the thrills, I like the story that it had to offer but I also like the mental health angle that the first film plays with and the same thing could be said about the second one as we continue to kind of dive into the mental health angle and this story how it's baked into this narrative this time around being from the point of view of a person from fame and just the idea as this character sky is always left up to pleasing other people but in doing so she's ignoring her own mental health or addressing her past traumatic experiences
differences and masking it with a smile or addiction as we see with smile and her fears of what comes with being a pop star and having to answer to her mom who's her manager or her publicist or the record label or her fans crossing the line. And I also thought there was some effective thrills every now and then, but also the movie isn't afraid to be mean. And what I mean by mean is, in the first film, we saw how Rose was being tormented by the entity and it was really messed up, especially what they did with Rose's cat. But in this film, Sky sees the worst end of the entity. Like the entity is playing games. I'm talking about some crazy games with her. And like I said, it is mean and it is cruel. And then last thing I want to mention without spoiling anything is my enjoyment of some of the elements of the ending of the film because I thought it was so intriguing because it sets up this very interesting angle and really makes you wonder what scale of how it ends can be explained or handled in a follow-up. And another thing I'll add into that is I like this kind of face-to-face -face confrontation that our character gets. I won't dive too deep into what happens at the end, but I, I like the idea of facing your fear is very similar to the first one. So with all that being said, those are my positives, but even with the good things I mentioned, I still find myself slightly disappointed by the end of this film. Getting the little things out of the way first, I will mention that I wasn't the biggest fan of the supporting cast in this film, and it's not like the first film had this great supporting ensemble cast. Like I like Kyle's role in the first one, but everyone else in the first one was just kind of forgettable, and the same thing goes with this one. Like You get the occasional laugh out of the assistant, I think his name was Jackson. You have her mom that's kind of annoying, but I just didn't find, like Naomi is like, by far the best thing about this film as far as acting. And it's not that the acting was bad from the supporting cast, it's just that they didn't have anything to do. And a couple other little things, of course you gotta throw away some of the logical things that this film throws at you because some of the stuff just makes no sense. And then one more little nitpick, I kind of talked about it earlier, but I wasn't the biggest fan of like the pop star isms in the film. What I mean by that is, it's very monotonous. Like we're seeing her dance routines, we're seeing her signing autographs. Like to me, while it was kind of touching on some elements about the character, it just was kind of boring, if I'm being honest, especially when I get to my biggest issue. But I just found like some of those more pop star angles didn't have a lot of nuance in it. It was just like, it was very stereotypical, very surface level. It reminded me like I was watching like VH1 behind the scenes type of like in a horror movie type of vein. Like when, when Britney Spears went crazy, like this is the stuff we see in this film. So those are the little things. Now getting to my biggest issues that I have with Smile 2. So one of my biggest issues with this movie is is we have this bigger sequel with this bigger budget, bigger scope, but we don't expand on the world. And in particular, we don't expand on the entity. Now, listen, I can hear y'all now in the comments. Ambiguity, we don't need to, I, I'm here with you on that. I don't need an origin story of where the entity came from, where, well, I would like to know where it first began, but I don't need a whole backstory. But I do want to get more explanation of the lore, of the mythology, expanding upon this creature and diving a little bit deeper into where it comes from. Like that's not saying that you have to follow a blueprint of like a sequel of like unraveling everything from the first, but like give me some more lore. That's something I really was hoping for in this film. And again, they don't expand upon it at all. I recently revisited the original film before seeing the second movie. And for me, when you look at the second half of this film, I don't want to say the film was like a beat for beat of the first one, but it was pretty damn close. Sky basically experiences similar things that Rose did in part one, which in return made things feel very redundant and very predictable as far as the jump scares and knowing things weren't really real. And it just felt like we were rehashing the first film. Again, I feel like we could have spent so much time in the second half of this movie, again, expanding the lore, getting a better understanding of the creature, but again, we're just doing the same song and dance of what we saw in the first film. Like I said not too long ago, I also personally felt that the pop star lifestyle plot was a little bit surface level. To me, the film teeters on the edge of intriguing commentary about the pressures and the pitfalls of fame, yet it chooses to gloss over these themes in preference for more superficial thrills, which I felt this film was more concerned about leaning more towards the silliness or the absurdity of the situation. For example, if you guys have seen the first film, you remember when Rose goes to her, I believe it was her nephew's birthday party, and the scene could have been played for comedy, but then you have the reveal of her cat, and it's like, oh man, that's messed up, right? She just found her dead cat, and there's not a similar scene in the second one, but it has a similar sentiment for me, where we see Sky, who goes to, I believe it was like a charity event, 
and she has to read off a teleprompter, and let's just say crazy stuff happens, and to me, it plays on the comedy in that scene, and like, there's a particular character that's in that scene that was like, that is traumatic, but they kind of undercut the, the, the drama in that moment, and the seriousness by having an old lady fall i'll just say that and i'm like and the audience liked it but i'm like dude you could have dove deeper into the drama and not play for the laughs like i said in my reaction last night that this film kind of felt to me like akin to and this isn't as good as this film i'm gonna mention but it kind of reminded me of the tonal shift evil dead one to evil dead two and there's other examples of how one film is very serious and the next ones are like not like slapstick comedy but they lean more into the comedy like i think of I love Nightmare on Elm Street, but after the first one, it becomes a little silly and goofy. Freddy's telling jokes and it's being a little bit more goofy with his tone. So I do have an issue with how this film decided to play with the tone. And, and again, I think that's going to work for the general audience. Like, I don't think a lot of people want to be scared all the way through a film, but I personally prefer the more dramatic and serious tone from the first one, where this one, like to me, was a bit silly at points. Now, before wrapping up this review, I want to thank you all for making it to this point of the video if you've enjoyed yourself so far do me a favor hit that like button share this video share your thoughts in the comments and consider sticking around by subscribing to the channel overall while smile 2 provides the platform for naomi scott to deliver a career performance that deserves significant acclaim the film's overall execution falls short of its potential a gripping opening captivates with potential as well but unfortunately it's bogged down by familiar and uninspired middle half of the film rendering a plot that fails to expand on its lore the film also suggests a fascinating narrative lurking beneath the surface what about the duality of the hidden cost of success but ultimately opts for a formulaic approach that doesn't do justice to its potential narrative. Now, I'll admit, there will be fans of the genre that will definitely find enjoyment in watching this film, but for those like me that was looking for more of a profound exploration of fame may end up feeling disappointed by the results. Now, I rarely do this, but I'm gonna give you all two rankings. One of the rankings will be from just a pure entertainment, candy, popcorn, thrills, and a good performance and some really fun, unique filmmaking. I'm gonna give the film a three out of five. But again, for people like myself wanting an expansion of the lore and diving deep into the themes and less about the same story beats, then I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 with the potential that was left behind. Thank you all for watching this review. Make sure to share your thoughts. It's your turn to share your thoughts in the comments below. What did you like? What you, did you not like about Smile 2? Do you want to see a Smile 3? Which I'm pretty sure they will do one. Because even though if I was slightly disappointed, this movie's going to make money. There will be more films in this franchise. But let me know your thoughts on the pros the cons what worked what didn't work favorite moment least favorite moment your thoughts in the ending and what would you like to see next let's talk about it all in the comments below thank you all again for watching today's review don't forget that you all are awesome stay safe and i'll catch you all on the next video